Motor Week is made possible by Lucas Oil, Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper, and TireRack.com. Motor Week, television's automotive magazine, with your host, John Davis. Hello and welcome to Motor Week and to another of our Motor Week Compare a Car Road Test. This time we're going to compare four family size front drive four door hatchbacks with wheelbases between 97 and 105 inches, all members of what's called the international size class. Our contestants include three Orientals and one domestic. First off the block carrying the General Motors X car banner is the Pontiac Phoenix. Next, Toyota's newest and biggest front drive car, the Camry along with Mazda's exciting sports hatchback, the 626 Touring Sedan. And finally, the car our staff voted best in its class last spring, the Nissan Datsun Stanza. Before we start, keep pencil and paper handy so you can keep score along with us. And the rules? Well, each of our six testers has 200 points to divide among the contestants. First, each person can award up to 40 points for appearance. Fit and finish, as well as styling, both inside and out, are what they're looking for here. 60 points can be given for practicality. This is our biggest and most important category for family-oriented cars. It includes how much a car costs and how much it can carry. 30 points per voter will be awarded for performance. That means both handling and acceleration. And another 30 points for braking. We'll be watching the tendency of the rear wheels to skid on these front drive cars. Finally, 40 points for mileage, still an important car buying factor, particularly for a family car, even if there aren't any long lines at the gas pump at the moment. The winning car will be the one that gets the most number of points out of a possible 1,200. Got it? Then let's get started with the car that won our recent Motor Week Driver's Choice Award for Best Hatchback or Wagon, the smallest car in our group, the Nissan Datsun Stanza. We admit to being a bit partial to the Nissan Datsun Stanza. It was one of the first cars Motor Week tested over two years ago, and its clean, trim, plowshare shape hasn't changed much since. The overall styling suffers only from the drastic downward slope of the rear hatch. Like most Japanese cars, body panel fit is flawless. Gaps between hood and fenders are uniform, with edges so smooth that the Stanza easily passed our Motor Week jawbreaker test, and it's a good thing, too. The only quality control problem with this stanza, and with most Nissan products we've seen, is the paint. The finish was pot-marked with ripples or orange peel, marring the otherwise high-gloss shine. The cockpit of our stanza was also familiar. It's roomy and attractive, even if it does look a bit spartan. The twin bucket seats are comfortable, though a bit flat, with only adequate support. Instrumentation on our Highline XE model is the most complete of any car in the test. Coolant, oil pressure, voltage, along with fuel, speed, and RPM are all lined up in a neat formation. In the center dash, you get a simple radio and rotary European-style ventilation controls that work well through a multitude of vents. You'll need fresh air if you try and cram five adults into the stanza. Despite advertisements that claim rear leg crossing room for three, there isn't much room for the rest of our bodies. Our four doors rear doors were small with high sills. There's anything but generous shoulder room and foot space is also at a premium due to a high center tunnel. Cargo volume though is very good. Even with the split rear seat upright, our four bags were quickly swallowed. But in our test for optimal efficiency of space, the wide intrusion of the rear suspension towers kept our two biggest bags from lying side by side. Stanza power comes from an 88 horsepower Napus X engine with two spark plugs per cylinder for better fuel combustion. Accessibility is only fair, being compromised by the add-on air conditioning components. The AC, along with a three-speed automatic gearbox we didn't request, helped push the XE's price from a base of $8,099 to our car's $9,059. Yet the Stanza was still the least expensive car in our group. That automatic transmission meant a performance disadvantage for the Stanza. A still reasonable passing time of 5.7 seconds from 40 to 55 miles per hour was 7 tenths of a second slower than our 1981 test car. That also made it the pokiest of our Comparacar contestants. Likewise, a time of 13.7 seconds to accelerate from zero to 60, 
a 500-foot on-ramp dash of 10.1 seconds at 53, and a 19-second, 73-mile-per-hour quarter mile, all in last place. Our attitude on handling, however, was more positive. An average speed through our slalom of 42 miles per hour placed it in the middle of its competition. The power rack and pinion steering is fast and light with only the normal amount of plowing understeer you'd expect from a front drive car. And despite soft springs, the Stanza behaves admirably in an emergency with no hint of rear end twitchiness. In longer front wheel drive models, that's usually a major shortcoming as is the even more violent rear end swing that normally occurs with premature rear brake lockup in panic stops. No problem in the stanza. With only a hint of instability, halts took a brief 120 feet on average from 55 miles per hour. The front disc rear drums were very hard to lock without Herculean effort, a good, well-proportioned system. The stanza also had the smallest curb-to-curb -curb turning diameter of the group. 35 feet. That also makes it the only contestant to fall within our acceptable range. There are two other areas where the stanza excels. Wind noise is almost non-existent at highway speeds, with a low sound level reading of only 68 decibels at 55, a score matched only by the Toyota Camry. And fuel economy? Well, thanks to the efficient engine, the EPA rates the stanza automatic at 27 city and 36 highway. Our 100-mile test loop produced a fine result of 33, just what it should be. So while the second time around we did find a few more faults with the Stanza, it still remains an outstanding car, and as the smallest and least expensive contestant, a bargain hunter's delight. An impressive compact package. Our next contestant is a new model that joined the Mazda 626 lineup of coupes and sedans when the car switched to front-wheel drive last January. Up a notch on our wheelbase scale at 98.8 inches, the 626 Touring Sedan. The sporty Mazda 626 in some ways is the most interesting car of the bunch. It passes itself off as a hatchback, but its slick shape reminds you more of European sedans such as the Audi 5000S. Aerodynamics obviously played a big part in the Mazda design. Mazda's quality of workmanship has come a long way too. We looked but couldn't find anything wrong with the flawless medium brown metallic paint or the body panels that fit straight in uniform from one side of the car to the other. The best fit and finish of our four car group matched only by the Toyota Camry. For more of the sporty nature of the 626, just look inside. There's a wide, airy interior that features a long list of standard items, including a super comfortable and very supportive 10-way adjustable driver's seat. The long, thin dash includes a clear instrument pod that has a large half-moon speedometer and tack. Yet surprisingly, there's no readout for engine functions except for coolant temperature, a European trim we don't applaud. Another transatlantic touch is the logical placement of light and wiper controls on fingertip switches. You can reach them without loosening your grip on the wheel. But we did object to the inconvenient placement of the power window controls. They're way down and in front of the excellent manual gearbox shifter. The air conditioning system is also the weakest of our foursome, but at least the oscillating vents provide good blower distribution throughout the long cabin. The slick shape of the 626 has one other drawback. Headroom is at a premium. Yet the split rear seat cushion means boxier cargo has ample room in what is actually a rather shallow cargo compartment. Once again, our two biggest bags refuse to squeeze next to each other. Under the 626 hood lies a two liter, 83 horsepower overhead cam four cylinder that comes standard with a five speed overdrive transaxle. Thanks to Mazda's unique way of conquering emission controls, things look busier than usual. Yet most normal maintenance items are as accessible as any other car in its class. Starting price for the Turing sedan is a hefty $10,195, but this 626 only comes in deluxe trim. So with air conditioning and a few extras, it grew only to $11,295. That makes it the most expensive car in our test but it was also the best equipped for the money by far. That price includes the first automatically adjustable shock valving on any mass production car. 
Controlled from dash-mounted push buttons, it gives the 626 Touring Sedan a distinct advantage on any test track. Handling is very precise with only a hint of understeer. With power rack and pinion steering and aggressive tires, the 626 managed a very fast transit through our switchback at an average speed of 47 miles per hour, easily taking the best in group. Through our higher speed emergency lane change, the 626 is a model of stability, even if you do pay for its prowess with the harshest ride of all the contestants. A torquey engine and good gear spacing also contributes to acceleration times. Overall, they were second only to our V6-powered Phoenix. We find a 40 to 55 mile per hour passing time of 5.4 seconds quite reasonable for any 2,600 pound four-door. While the 626 has the smallest engine of the group, power comes on fast and doesn't fade till well above 4,000 RPM. But that does hurt longer runs. While its 500-foot dash of 9.5 seconds at 55 matches the Phoenix, the 0 to 60 time of 13.2 seconds and quarter mile time of 18.4 seconds at 74 falls behind all but the automatic stanza. But even though we found a few frays in the 626 performance, we couldn't find any in its brakes. Almost unnervingly short panic stops of 98 feet on average from 55 miles per hour put our Mazda heads ahead, not only of its three competitors, but most every other car too. Halts were straight with only a hint of swing, with good pedal pressure and no fade. Outstanding. And if you're inclined to turn around, any reversal will take 37 feet of pavement, about two feet more than the stanza and in the middle of our four car group. Like most of our contestants, the 626 Touring Sedan is a quiet car. Its 69 decibels of road noise at 55 miles per hour no doubt comes from its wind-cheating shape. The one area where we felt a bit cheated was in fuel economy. Despite EPA ratings of 29 city and 41 highway, our 5-speed could do no better than 29 on our urban economy loop. Not a good showing given such high expectations. So the Mazda 626 Touring Sedan is hardly perfect. But its good looks, adequate utility, fine handling, and terrific brakes go a long way in concealing any warts. Perhaps that makes it the Sporting Life's high price pick in our Comparacar road test. Now, while you're marking down the scores on our first two cars, why not mark down our address too? Let us know what you think of our Comparacar test. Maybe you have some candidates of your own. Our address is MotorWeek, Owings Mills, Maryland, 21117. That's Motor Week, Owings Mills, Maryland, 21117. Okay, now we come to the newest car in our group. Moving up again in wheelbase, at 102.4 inches, the Toyota Camry Liftback. The Toyota Camry Liftback is, in our minds, the first Japanese model to seriously challenge Detroit's bread and butter middle class car market. Its conventional look should make even the most conservative domestic car buyer feel right at home. While its boxy shape does look to us like it was done by a committee, it wins high marks for both fit and finish. Our liftback's interior also makes few new statements. Yet again, it's a solid design with the living room feel so typical of U.S. made cars. Seats are broad and flat with generous padding. Although the Highline LE version does contain a tachometer, the baseline Camry dash has only a huge speedometer along with engine coolant and fuel gauges. A center pod houses an excellent radio, a small storage cavity, and ventilation controls. That airflow is aided by an extra row of outlets along the top of the dash that sends a breeze just under the rooftop for backseat occupants, a thoughtful touch. Rear seaters will also find generous headroom, unusual for a hatchback, and more shoulder room than its oriental rivals, yet not as much as the Phoenix. Likewise, luggage space is also above average. Unlike the Stanza and the 626, our two big bags just fit between the suspension uprights. And with the split rear seats also standard, there isn't much you can't carry in a Camry. Power comes from a single overhead cam, two liter, electronically fuel injected four cylinder, rated at 92 horsepower, again second in class only to the Phoenix. 
Toyota calls it their lightweight, advanced, super responsive engine, and it comes with an adequate five-speed manual gearbox. Maintenance accessibility was the best of the group. Cost for this domestic pretender begins at $8,048. Our modestly equipped car was $10,222, second in price only to the much better equipped Mazda 626. Unfortunately, the Camry generates a much, much lower level of performance than the 626. While it may be a fine family car, Camry handling is a huge disappointment. Is it like U.S. made cars? Well, it sure is, but it's like those made five to ten years ago. Excessive body roll, front end plow, a lazy suspension, and a widely trailing rear end ensured that the Camry's average slalom speed of 41 was way down at the bottom of our group. It would have been even lower without the engine's more than ample torque. Fortunately, emergency obstacle avoidance isn't quite as incompetent. The Camry never comes close to being out of control as the rear end continues to grudgingly follow. It raised our overall opinion on handling at least to the acceptable level. As expected, however, straight line performance was much better with a zero to 60 time of 12 seconds only slightly less than the Phoenix and well ahead of the Stanza and 626. Engine power is mid-range, making long-legged jaunts almost exhilarating. A 17.7 second quarter mile at 74 miles per hour was over a half second faster than any competitor. But you pay the price for that top end. There's less power where you might need it in everyday driving. The Camry's 40 to 55 passing time of 5.7 seconds tied the automatic stanza for last place. Over 500 feet, the Camry was slower than all but the Nissan product, with a time of 9.7 seconds at 54. In perspective, however, a respectable result for a family car. But we find the Camry's power front disc rear drum brakes far less respectable. From 55 miles per hour, panic stops were a very long 156 feet on average. We also experienced intermittent front wheel lock and more rear end swing around than any of the other three hatchbacks. Turning circle curb to curb is 37 feet, the same as the 626 and likewise judged slightly oversized. However, Toyota's fine use of sound insulation gave it, along with the stanza, the best decibel reading of the lot. 68 at 55 miles per hour. Plus, the Camry should take a lot of the marbles in fuel economy. With an EPA rating of 32 city and 44 highway, we were most impressed with an economy loop result of 35 miles per gallon. Mighty good for such a peppy mid-sized car. So despite what we would charitably call very mediocre handling and disappointing brakes, the Camry's fine craftsmanship, large interior, and superior fuel economy will make it a tempting model for the traditional U.S. car buyer. Our final entry has the distinction of being the biggest and oldest of our group. We first saw it as an early 1980 model in the spring of 1979. With a 104.9 inch wheelbase, it's the venerable, much maligned, but as you'll see, still very viable Pontiac Phoenix. We have to confess we had some misgivings about even including a General Motors X body in our Comparacar road test. We thought this trend setting front driver might be getting a bit long in the tooth to be competitive, and its checkered history made us overly wary of problems. But in fact, we found fewer negatives than we expected. Its body style is still current and suffers only, as do all but the 626, from a sharply sloping hatch line that mars the overall well-balanced look. But what really displeased us was the dull paint finish and widely varying gaps between the doors, both back to front and side to side. Fortunately, there were no such gaffes on the inside. Velour draped door panels and seats were by far the most expensive looking of our four contestants, and there wasn't a bit of plastic wood to spoil the view. The broad front buckets have generally flat cushions, but also enough lower back support to delay the pain of even day-long trips. The driver is also faced with a sparse instrument cluster that provides little except speed and fuel data. While an optional gauge package can be ordered, our car contained only a row of idiot lights above four well-positioned center air vents. In general, the Phoenix had fewer conveniences than the other cars in our group. But where it really counts, the Phoenix came through. 
It has more usable head, leg, and shoulder room, front and rear, than any competitor. The longer wheelbase also means wide doors for easier entry and exit. And if you lower the single-piece rear seat back, the Phoenix takes on the bottomless pit nature of a station wagon. Even with a seat up, cargo space is very generous. Our two large bags were easily accommodated side by side, by far the biggest cargo carrying car in our test. And just in case you want to try for the Guinness Book of Records, the Phoenix luggage bay will hold up to nine unsavory characters, again, more than any other. Other advantages and disadvantages of our Phoenix included a fine optional 112 horsepower 2.8 liter V6 and a performance suspension package. Alas, we also got only a three-speed automatic gearbox. While the most powerful engine compartment of the lot, it's also the most difficult to service, with the six cylinders rear plugs a real nightmare to change. With the group's least standard equipment, the Phoenix LJ's $7,690 base price quickly climbs to $10,176. Yet while over a grand more than the Stanza, it's still a bit less than the Camry and far less costly than the 626. Thanks to the V6 and the beefed up suspension, the Phoenix did quite well in our performance test. Through our slalom, its average speed of 42 miles per hour matched that of the Stanza. Actually, it would have done much better if it hadn't been for the tires. Even with less chassis understeer than all but the 626, the tires rapidly scrubbed off speed at every turn. It was also no surprise that with its much larger engine, the Phoenix LJ had good overall acceleration times. Its quarter mile romp was 18.4 seconds at 75 miles per hour along with a 500-foot dash of 9.5 seconds at 55 miles per hour. However, these results were almost matched by the smaller, less powerful 626. But with lots more low-end torque, the Phoenix had a clear advantage in a 0 to 60 race. A time of 11.7 seconds was some 11% faster than the 626. And a 5.2 second time to rise from 40 to 55 miles per hour was also clearly best of group. Just think how it might have gone with a five speed. But how about stopping the Phoenix? How would we find this X car's often suspect braking system? Well, on our car at least, all went fairly well. Although the brakes were easy to lock, panic stops from 55 miles per hour averaged a short 124 feet and were generally straight to boot. The rear end of the Phoenix had far less tendency to swing around than the Camrays. So all in all, it's not a bad system for such a long front wheel drive car. But the Phoenix did take several booby prizes. For instance, turning diameter. A curb to curb measurement of 39 feet is right up there with full size cars. In addition, the uneven door gaps helped produce 71 decibels of wind and road noise at 55 miles per hour, considerably noisier than the three Japanese hatchbacks. Then there's fuel economy. Despite an EPA rating of 22 city and 34 highway, we never saw better than 26 miles per gallon. But we must also admit that's not bad for a 2,825 pound V6 automatic. So despite a lot of early misgivings, the Pontiac Phoenix X car is a worthy hatchback competitor. It's certainly the roomiest of the lot and can deliver the most power. And that's an important point if you like to take to the open road towing a small boat or trailer. So as a total package, it can at least hold its own against all comers. There you have it, our four five doors. Time now to open the envelope and figure out our scores. See if you agree. For appearance, fit and finish, and style, the hands-down winner was the Mazda 626 Touring Sedan with 82 out of a possible 240 points. Its sleek lines and goofless assembly placed it well ahead of the boxier but extremely well-constructed Toyota Camry. The orange peel paint of the Stanza and the uneven door gaps on the Phoenix didn't get them many points. Next, our most important category with 360 points, practicality. Here we've got a surprising winner, the Pontiac Phoenix. Its 112 points came from well above average head and shoulder room and its very wide cargo floor. As for tested price, it was more expensive than the Stanza, but cheaper than the Camry or the 626. At first glance, performance may not seem to be an important category for a family car, until you have to swerve and pull away from an emergency. 
Superior handling was the key here, and the Mazda 626 had it, which gave it 62 out of a possible 180 points. The fine handling of the 626 was matched by its braking. It stopped extremely short and straight. Add another 72 of 180 points for the 626. From our road test, it should be evident that rear end swing during panic stops is an unfortunate way of life for most front wheel drive cars. Last but hardly least, mileage. Here the Toyota Camry and Nissan Stanza split the first place honors with 77 points each. The automatic Camry recorded an outstanding 35 for best of group and the five speed Stanza 33. The manual 626 was a disappointment though, it only got 29. The V6 Automatic Phoenix came in about as expected at 26. Figure out the winner? Well, it was a clear favorite in three out of five categories. The Mazda 626 Touring Sedan. We were impressed with the 626, enough so that we'll be giving it a long-term road test. We'll have more reports on it during the coming year. But the real surprise is second through fourth place. By the numbers, it was the lowly Pontiac Phoenix, followed by the Nissan Datsun Stanza and the Toyota Camry. But with only seven points separating them, we call it a three-way tie. Proving that even though our gang preferred the sportier 626, the candidates in this very popular car group are very close in design and execution, letting buyers know that whatever his or her personal tastes, they can't go very far wrong. We'll see you next week on Motor Week.